wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from the Chris Voss Show dot com. There you have it, the Chris Voss Show dot com. Who knew? It's another show. Welcome to the Chris Voss Show, folks. The place uh, where uh, we have the family that loves you but doesn't judge you, at least not as harsh as your wife does, uh, because you left the milk out again and you didn't put the you didn't put it back in the fridge. Anyway, guys, uh, as always, we're bringing the most smartest minds, the amazing authors, uh, people all around the world who uh, share their ideas, their concepts, their mindsets, and improve the quality of your life. And all we ask for you from the little Chris Voss show after 15 years is please, for the love of God, or for the show to your family or friends and relatives, go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Voss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Voss. Uh, subscribe to the big 130,000 LinkedIn group, the LinkedIn newsletter. Uh, go to TikTok on Chris Voss One and uh, Chris Voss Facebook. Uh, today we have an amazing multi-book uh, prolific author she has written so many books i couldn't even count them on amazon I, I don't have a calculator that goes high enough in uh in numbers evidently so there you go we have jesse q sutanto on the show with us today she's written a multitude of books her latest book came out march 14th 2023 called vera wong's unsolicited advice for murderers so for those of you wondering how to do the murder and uh she might have some advice <laughs> don't <laughs> the attorneys made me say that uh so uh she's going to be on the show talking to us jesse is the author of adult young adult and children's middle grade books she has an mst in creative writing from oxford university and a ba in english from uh, english literature from berkeley she hasn't found a way of saying that without sounding obnoxious. That doesn't sound obnoxious. It's uh, quite astute. Uh, her film rights to her women's fiction, Dial A for Aunties, was bought by Netflix in a competitive bidding war. Her adult books include Dial A for Aunties, its sequel, Four Aunties in a Wedding, and Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers. Her young adult books include The Obsession. Of course it does. Uh, the Girl... And well, that was unexpected. Her uh, MG books include Theo Tan and the Fox Spirit and a sequel, Theo Tan and the Iron Fan. Uh, welcome to the show, Jesse. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Thanks for coming. We certainly appreciate having you on the show as well. Uh, give us your dot coms. Where do you want people to find out more about you on the interwebs? Uh, mostly on Instagram at Jesse Q Sutanto and my website uh, is Jesse Q Sutanto author.com because I broke Jesse Q .com and I didn't know how to fix it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So congratulations on the new book. How many books do you have, by the way, so we can get a pitch out to have people go look them all up on Amazon there. Uh, so this year I have four books out last year i had four books come out and the year before i had two books so i guess i have 10 published books there you go congratulations you're quite the prolific writer yeah um i i guess it shows that i don't have much of a social life <laughs> <laughs> well i mean when you're writing you you know you gotta you gotta do the writing thing it's, it's a little hard to get out when you're writing mm -hmm. and editing all the time right but uh, it sounds like you're inspiring quite an audience that has built a following around you and, and your books from all different ages. So give us a 30,000 overview of what's inside Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers. So Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers is about Vera, who is a 60-year-old lady um, who lives on top of her tea house. And um, she is very lonely. Um, everyone seems to have kind of moved on or forgotten about her. Um, so she's kind of lonely and depressed. And then one day she comes downstairs to her tea house and finds a dead body uh, in the middle of it. 
Wow. And she decides that um, she is going to investigate the cause of death uh, because nobody investigates a wrongdoing better than a suspicious Chinese mother with time on her hands. <laughs> <laughs> and this is set in San Francisco's Chinatown, correct? Yes. There you go. Yeah, you know, those those uh those uh Chinese mom tiger moms, they're uh they're they're something mm -hmm. else. Pretty fierce. Um <laughs> so uh so she finds uh, I guess in his hand he has a flash drive. Yes. Uh so in his hand he has a flash drive and you know, just something comes over her and she decides to kind of you know, swipe it before the police arrives, um, as any uh, self-respecting Chinese mom would do. <laughs> it's a who done it then? A murder mystery, would you say, sleuth? Yes, uh, it's a cozy um, who done it. There you um, go. And I, I would say the character of Vera is kind of based eighty percent on my mom and twenty percent on my dad. <laughs> What's going on with your parents, eh? Advice for murderers. <laughs> well, yeah, just because they have, like, advice for everyone, you know? Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah, there you go. Um, so uh, with Vera Wong, has she appeared in any of your books before? Is this a new character? No, this is a new character, uh, actually. But go. she just she feels very familiar because um, I've written about Chinese aunties before. Um, mm -hmm. And she's kind of all of like those aunties uh, distilled into one character. <laughs> it's it's interesting how the uh, the people in our lives and our experiences uh, make up you know some of the characters that a lot of authors build when they build their novels. Um, so I, I guess that's the spin on the unsolicited advice for murderers, uh, and as she goes down the rabbit hole of solving the mystery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. There you go. So, what, so you, it sounds like you compiled some people that were in your life and your thing. What made you, uh, the topics that are in this book or the plot and everything, what made you uh, develop this and flush it out? How did it come to you? So, um, I, I first wrote um, Dial A for Aunties, uh, which is about a young woman who accidentally kills her blind date. And then has uh -huh. to get the help of her mom and very meddlesome aunties to help get rid of the body. Yeah. Um, and the reason why I wrote that was because my husband, who is uh, English, you know, he came to Indonesia. He met my family and he was like, you need to write about your family. And I was <laughs> like, really? They're, they're so boring. And he they was seem like, normal oh, no, to me. Like, trust me. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. And he was like, no, 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 nothing about them is boring or normal. Um, so I tried writing about my family. Um, but every time I did, um, kind of like the drama, you know, hit too close to home and became stressful <laughs> for me. Uh -oh. So then I thought, well, what if I threw in a dead body? And somehow doing that um, unlocked the creative juices and I was able to write about my family. Um, mm -hmm. in like a really fun way. And mm -hmm. so um, same thing with Vera Wong, you know, um, I don't want to write just about my, my mom. Yeah. Um, Cause that would be <laughs> stressful as hell. <laughs> she but, might read um, the book and be like, again, what did you say about? Oh yeah. Well, she yeah. did. She does read all of my books. See, that's the thing. Uh -oh. um, and she, and she really very much approves of Vera. Um, oh, so I, I was like, you know, throw in a dead body. And then suddenly it becomes totally, you know, like a really fun, lighthearted. Wow. Can I say lighthearted when there's a dead body involved? Yeah, but, I don't it know. Is I don't know going on. but it sounds like a nice fun romp. And, and Vera sounds like she's fun. Uh, she's a little old lady who's going to get, uh, hopefully she doesn't get herself in any trouble. Uh, you know, with the murderers and all that good stuff, but uh, it might be some danger from uh, doing all that stuff. But uh, yeah, do you, do you, do you, are most of the characters in your books uh, of Chinese origin? Um, no, so uh, in in Vera Wong, we have a cast of five characters, so one of them is Vera, uh, mm -hmm. who is Chinese, and then we have Sana, who is 
of Indian uh, ethnicity. Um, mm -hmm. We have Julia, who is Caucasian, um, Ricky, who is Indonesian, and we have Oliver, who is Chinese American. So um, it's a good mix of people, I think. There you go. Um, it sounds like a lot of fun. Do you do you uh, anticipate making more books, maybe a series using Vera? Yeah. Um, so thankfully, Vera has been so uh, successful that my publisher did ask for a sequel. So I'm, I'm so happy about that. Um, I just finished writing the sequel uh, and I'm kind of taking a break right now um, before I, I edit it. Oh. So I, I never know if it's good until, you know, I, I actually read it. So. Ah, yeah. so you haven't done the final proofread on it then? Uh, on the sequel? No, I haven't even yeah. like, I haven't even read it. Um, oh, okay. Since finishing it. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, that's probably good to get some time away. You know, you get a fresh perspective on it and yeah. get back to reading it. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a hit character in the series for you. Uh, those, these are always good because people love series and novels and and mysteries and stuff. Mm -hmm. They they freaking love. We have people on the show. They're like in I don't know. They're like thirty levels into some of their series, and you know they got mm -hmm. multiple series running through, and sometimes they cross over. Uh, and people eat them up. They love series, man. They fall yeah, in love with the character, and, uh... and they just keep going. Yeah, and and because it's based on my parents, I just feel like I'll never <laughs> run out of uh, material, you know. Because like I, mm -hmm. I really um, a lot of like the things that Vera says in the book, like she's always she has like all of this um, wisdom that is like very random. She's like, you know, mm -hmm. um, like don't drink cold water because it's gonna freeze the fats in your arteries and give you heart disease and that's literally what my parents say they're like don't drink cold water you'll get a heart attack um, <laughs> so, and um and they'll say stuff like you know don't don't go to sleep um after 9 p.m because that's too late and you'll get brain cancer you know it's just a lot wow. of like, really random uh pieces of <laughs> advice that uh i just <laughs> this leads to the unsolicited um, advice uh did they give yeah. you any murdering advice your parents <laughs> not yet but i'm sure you know knock on wood yeah. if i ever commit murder they will have advice there you go. That that uh, husband starts acting up. You know they might have some advice yeah. for you. You know, uh, what's what's it old uh, arsenic and lace? Put some arsenic in the old coffee there. I'm not that I'm uh, becoming accessory. The lawyer just said I have to say. Um, so there you go. I don't don't do that, folks. Don't don't get any ideas. Um, uh, uh, I know we you know with novels we can't tease out the middle and the end because you know you got to buy the book to find out what's up there. Uh, anything more you want to tease out about uh, Vera Wong's unsolicited advice for murderers? Um, I guess I would say that uh, something that I found incredibly rewarding is uh, how many people have messaged me to say that they really uh, connected with, you know, this character or that character. Uh, mm -hmm. So Julia, for example, um, she is, uh she has like a two and a half year old who is a little bit different you know from other toddlers um mm -hmm. and i kind of based that on, on uh, my first uh kid because when she was that age she was such a an oddball you know and um as a mom i was i was always so concerned and and people would be very well-meaning and and you know, be like, like, uh, is she okay? You know, because she she just didn't really talk to anyone and 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 all that mm -hmm. stuff. So um, it, it was a lot of things that uh, I experienced, which I poured into the book. And so um, I'm I'm always very grateful when when readers reach out to me and say like, oh, I feel so seen. Um, so it's it's been a wonderful experience. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're on your way to a great new series and uh, books that people will love because you, you've been doing such a great job. And and it sounds like, you know, where, where you're appealing to so many uh, youth, young adults and stuff and youth, you're, as your fan base mm -hmm. grows up, you're going to have one hell of a following as they, as they follow you through all your different books you put out. 
yeah that's the hope that's the whole point of it um so anything future you want to tease out that you're also working on top of everything else um, so I, I did have a, uh, a really dark, twisted um, suspense come out uh, in August. It's called oh, yeah. I'm Not Done With You Yet. Um, oh. And it's about, um, yeah, it's about two writers uh, who go to Oxford University and, you know, do the master's in creative writing like I did. Uh, so oh. it was so fun um, looking back on my notes from Oxford because I, I went like uh, over 13 years ago, you know, and I was like, oh my gosh, I had forgotten about this and that and this and that. Um, anyways, obviously one of them is a sociopath um, and uh, becomes <laughs> obsessed uh, with the other and, um, you know, it kind of chases her down all the way to New York City where uh, things very bad things happen. So uh, uh -oh. I'm very excited about, <laughs> about this like story. Some friends and friendships are worth killing for in this dark, twisty suspense novel by national best selling author mm -hmm. Jesse Sinton. Gene isn't happy. Uh, that's always how it starts, right there. Jill and Jane and Jill, Jill and Jane, John and Jane go up the hill, whatever. I don't know. There's a nursery rhyme in there somewhere. But uh, so you pull from this and rock and roll. Do you do you see any more uh, maybe coming from this book? Maybe uh, I'm still not done with you yet as a follow up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll have to remember that title. Um, there you go. have been messaging me, asking me, like, if there will be a sequel. Uh, Right now, I don't have any plans yet for a sequel, but we, you know, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Never say never. Is it is it a little bit like? I mean, I'm sure it's different, but is it a little bit? What was that? What was that one thing of the gal who rents the other young lady? You know, a white female, something or other. There was a movie on it, and it was a is about is two it gals. Single white. Female? Single white. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it yeah, is it yeah. a bit like that maybe? Uh, people keep telling me that it is, but, um, <laughs> so I guess it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, um, uh, it has the four aunties in a wedding come out yet. I think, was that the one that was going, no, it was dial a for aunties that was coming out on Netflix. Wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yes. And four aunties and a wedding came out, uh, last year, I think. Um, and then next year we'll have the final book in the aunties oh. uh, series. Yeah. There you go. I'll have to go check them out. That way I can understand your family better and see, get it, get all the goods on what's <laughs> going on over there. Um, got to go renew that Netflix. Um, so this should be fun. Uh, and you're putting out so much diverse stuff. Do you, do you ever find it hard to, you know, write about different things in different genres for different audiences? Uh, no, um, actually, because, is um so so like i get into the mood of my books so for mm -hmm. example after i wrote uh i'm not done with you yet um i was like wow that was really dark you know i really need something lighthearted and sweet <laughs> and innocent now um mm -hmm. and i think that was when i wrote uh my young adult uh rom-com and and then after oh. i wrote that one i was like okay now i'm ready for you know like a let's good, get back to murdering um, yeah <laughs> so is it really nice i can't imagine that i would be a happy human being you know if i just wrote like dark suspense i would probably be quite miserable um mm -hmm. and then i would probably feel quite stifled if i can only write like light-hearted things as well so it's been really there nice you don't want to end up like Stephen King. He was a good-looking young man before he started writing books, and look at him now. <laughs> that's, a, that's a mean thing to say about Stephen King. He didn't deserve that. Um, so there you go. Um, did you always want to be a writer uh, when you were growing up? Um, so I was aggressively mediocre as a student, and mm -hmm. after I graduated uh with my bachelor's, I was like, oh God, what am I gonna do with an English lit degree? Um, 
And then I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll try my hand at this writing thing. So I went and got a master's in it. Um, and after I graduated with a master's, I was like, okay, I have a master's from Oxford, you know? Uh -huh. Um, so I am awesome and publishers are going to be knocking down my door, begging for my manuscript. And that did not happen. Um, so it took another like 10 years, uh, before I got my publishing deal. And during that time I did, um, a few different jobs. I was... Mm -hmm wedding photographer, um, oh. which, yeah, I, I really liked, but it was uh, really, really stressful as well. Um, but it was useful too, because um, you'll find that a lot of my characters are photographers. Oh, wow. uh, just because I know what I'm talking about, you know, when I, when I talk about photography. Um, and then I worked in my family company. Uh, so my family is in real estate uh, and I was terrible at it. Um, finally, when I was able to quit, thanks to my writing, you know, my cousins were like, oh, thank God. Oh, oh my, my God. Wow. God, you know, like, <laughs> they were like, well, you know, congratulations. And I'm so happy for you. We only had you on because of nepotism. And I was like, I know. Oh, thank you. <laughs> wow. Uh, leave those people out of your will for your book proceeds. <laughs> your book royalties. Just cut them out. Yeah. <laughs> just, just be like, uh, yeah, I remember, I remember how you people were, yeah, just cut them out of the will. Uh, so there you go. Well, it's been fun to have you on and super insightful. Give us your final thoughts and pitch out on the books, uh, as we go out to people to pick them up. Well, uh, so excitingly, Vera Wong's unsolicited advice for murderers has been picked up, uh, by Warren. Her brothers um, with Oprah and Mindy Kaling attached to produce. Oh, wow. um, so, you know, yeah. So I feel like Oprah and Mindy Kaling have really good taste. So please trust them <laughs> and pick up the book. <laughs> there you go. Order the book, folks, wherever fine books are sold. Uh, it's been fun to have you on. Thank you very much, Jesse. Thank you so much for having me. This was so fun. There you go. And folks, order the books wherever fine books are sold. Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers, doing the murdering. And uh, I'm Not Done With You Yet. Boy, what a chilling title that is. That kind of just sends a chill down my <laughs> spine just saying it. I'm not done with you. Like, who wants to hear that in a dark alley or something? Or, yeah. I don't know, you wake up and you're like, why am I in the bat? This bag. And they're like, I'm not done with you yet. It's like, uh, this is, uh, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have, uh, drank that, whatever. <laughs> I don't know a lot of the things, but this made up stuff. So thank you very much for coming on the show. Uh, thanks, Monica, for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Foss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Foss, Chris Foss, one on the tickety talkity, and, uh, Chris Foss, Facebook.com, and, uh, all the great things we do on social media. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>